Miss Porter is the mother of two boys who she affectionately refers to as chaos and destruction. She believes that Dr. Pepper is the best way to stay hydrated and has been a Denver Broncos fan since before John Elway was the quarterback. She believes in singing loud and laughing a lot. She is always in a good mood, except for when she's not. And most of her spare time is spent looking for her keys and matching socks. Carrie enjoys reading and learning new things. She believes in investing in people and that we can change our lives one moment at a time. She currently works for, for Lone Star College, University Park, as the Director of Advertising and Records. And if her bio description is any indication of her ability to entertain, I have no doubt that we are in for a treat. Please join me in welcoming Miss Porter. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. All right, this is a big room, so I'm going to have to kind of wander a little bit, all right? You guys okay with that? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, a few years ago, I solved one of the great mysteries of the world. Why do you only lose one sock? <laughs> so, what I discovered is you don't. It's just when you lose both, you don't notice. Right? Think about that for a second. So this made me wonder, what else should I be looking for that I'm missing every day, but I don't realize that it's lost? And could we be missing out on some of the best parts and the best pieces of life just because we don't know to look for them? Let's take people, for example, right? We make assumptions every day when we see someone walking down the street. And how many of you are sitting next to or sitting around someone that you didn't know very well before this weekend? All right, quite a few. How many of you know a whole lot more about the people who are sitting next to you because of this weekend? Right? Now, now think about that for a second. Think about. What would you have missed if you didn't have this opportunity? Because we make assumptions about each other every day, right? So take me, for example. Now, Stephanie already told you a lot of my secrets, so some of those have already been exposed. But um, there's probably more to me that you wouldn't know. You just saw me walking across campus. So what you would know from looking at me is I'm a tall, white female, right? Okay. But what you maybe wouldn't assume is this was my elementary school. So I, went to, I started elementary school in Douala, Cameroon, which is on the west coast of Africa. So my elementary experience was probably different from a lot of yours, right? And by the time I was eight years old, I'd had the opportunity to travel to about 10 different countries. So, what this gave me is a perspective on the world that it's not just a big place, but it's a real place. And a perspective on culture and diversity and race. Because when you are in a classroom and you are surrounded by people who are different than you, you don't necessarily start focusing on the differences, but you start to recognize the similarities. And you start to look for what you have in common and realize that we're a lot more alike than we are different sometimes, right? And we all come with that perspective, with that worldview. And in, in your chapters, each of you come and you bring something from your past, from the way that you see the world to the group. But if you don't share that and you don't look for that in others, you might miss it. So another thing that you might not know about me is I'm a singer. Some may say that I'm a dreamer, oh, but I'm not the only one. Maybe someday you will join us and the world will live as one. So I love to 
dancing because it's spring, it's fun. You can just kind of let it go, right? Um, yeah, there you go, that's, an, that's another time. Um, so, but what I love about music is there's this attention to the details. And if you study music, you realize how absolutely complex it is. You have to think about intonation and tempo and rhythm and all these things have to come together. And I love hearing perfect harmony, but I also understand the importance of listening. And that sometimes you get to lead, but sometimes you have to follow in order for everything to come together, right? And I also understand the importance of dissonance. And sometimes when there's some dissonance, you can come to the most beautiful resolution. And that's what I love about music. And each one of you, in each one of your chapters, each one of you has talents that may be hidden. And you may not be showing them to the rest of the world. You may not be as bold as to just break out into song. But there's talents and there's strengths in each one of your chapters and in each one of your campuses. And if you don't look for them, and you don't let yourself be seen, you may miss out on some of the best things that the people around you have to offer. So, another thing that you may not know about me is, yes, you know I work at Lone Star College as the Director of Advising and Records, but what you may not know is that I started my career as a probation officer. Yeah. In Harris County, downtown Houston, working with some fairly dangerous offenders, um, and I loved my job. Because if you know me, you know that I have a passion for developing people. And that I believe in the potential of others. And that everyone has an opportunity to make a difference. And the potential of your future is not necessarily held back by your past. And it drives what I do, it drives why I work with students, it drives everything that I do, because I understand the importance of passion. Do you know what your passion is? If you don't, start looking for it. Because passion is a powerful thing. It's contagious, it can bring you focus, it gives you drive, it keeps you going, and it brings energy to those around you. Because like I said, passion is contagious. And so if you take this year, and you take this project, and you pour your passion into it, it really can potentially change the world. So, like I said before, if you see me, you know, okay, she's a tall, white female, right? But what you wouldn't know is she's an African-educated singing probation officer, right? Because each one of us have more to the story. And if we don't look for it, we might miss out, right? But this doesn't just limit itself. This doesn't just limit itself to people. This is also true for opportunities. That we can miss out on opportunities simply because we're not looking for them, right? <coughs> So my first grade son is sitting down at the kitchen table and he's eating a burnt toaster waffle and he looks up at me and he says, Mom, I don't want to go to school today. And I said, why not? Don't you want to see all your friends? And he said, well, what if none of them are there? And I said, then you'll get to make new friends. And he said, well, what if no one's there? And I said, then you and your teacher are going to have an amazing day. And he said, well, what if she's not there? And I said, well, then you'll get to meet a new sub. And he said, well, what if, and I stopped him. And I said, what if your teacher has rented a blue rocket ship for the day and you are all going to take a field trip to the moon and meet a class of Martians and come back with friends that are completely out of this world? <laughs> and he looks at me in silence and I said, oh, I thought we were playing the what if game. This gives me one of those teachable moments in parenting where I can explain statistical probability to my six-year-old <laughs> and tell him that there is just as likely for things to go drastically right 
as there are for things to go colossally wrong. But you are going to miss out on some of the best opportunities and the best things in your day if you're not looking for them and you continue to focus on the wrong what-ifs. So he gets out the door and he goes off to school and gets on the bus and I come back in and I sit down and I'm reflecting on my morning and I think the most impactful thing about this story is not, not that it was 8.03 and the bus comes at 8.05. It's not that I burned the toaster waffle. The most impactful thing is I thought, oh my goodness, he sounds just like me. <laughs> Because the what if game, it's not just a game that six year olds play, right? We all play it. We filter our choices through a series of ifs. In fact, life is made up of if. <laughs> Mind blown, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so life is made up of ifs, and we, we filter these filter our choices, right? And in fact, the frontal lobe of our brain is actually designed to create these scenarios. Complex thinking allowing us to plan and prepare, and this is a wonderful thing, but what if we're playing the game wrong? We ask ourselves, what if no one likes my ideas? What if I can't make a difference? What if I fail this test? What if he doesn't really love me? What if they never forgive me? And this series of what ifs, they take us to a dangerous place of worry and fear. <coughs> Creativity shuts down. Enthusiasm shuts down. And all we can think about is protecting ourselves, right? So what happens if we start to change these what ifs? What if we start to tell ourselves, what if everyone likes my ideas? What if we really can make a difference on this campus? Because what ifs don't just stay scenarios in our brain, they actually lead us to act, right? Because after all, how many of you have an umbrella in your car? Well, of course, because what if it rains? <laughs> We're constantly told, prepare for the worst. But when do we start preparing for the best? Yeah. And what if it all starts with changing our what ifs? Like I said, what if we say, what if we can make a difference? Not just in this chapter, but on our campus. All of a sudden, when some of these things come up, they don't seem so scary. When you go to your next meeting, and they ask for who has a new idea, you absolutely present yours, because you know that the potential is out there, that the talent is out there, and that together, you have potential. When the president comes and says, who's going to present on, on what's going on? You are so excited to share the amazing things that you've learned this weekend and the amazing things that are going on in your chapter because you know that this group can make a difference. Studying for an extra hour for that test doesn't seem so pointless. And saying I'm sorry one more time doesn't seem like such a waste because you no longer see your relationship as a lost cause. What ifs can and do change your life. So the next time that you leave your house, along with your umbrella, you grab a granola bar because you think, what if I can make a difference? And you pass by someone that you pass by every single day, but today, because you're looking for it, you realize that he's holding a sign. And you're actually prepared to make a difference. 
Striking up a conversation with a stranger doesn't seem so scary because you've already told yourself, what if I make a new friend today? Because what ifs can turn into why nots. So start listening to your what ifs. Start paying attention to them in your friends and in your family and start paying attention to what you're looking for and to what you could be missing. Because after all, what ifs really have changed the world. Because what if all it took was the sale of a Volkswagen and a calculator and some work done in a garage to revolutionize the computer industry? What if it only took two musical notes to strike fear in ocean goers everywhere? <laughs> what if three circles could come together and form a symbol that would bring smiles to children for generations? It's only three circles. What if the work that you're doing in your project and in your chapter can change your campus? What if it could change the world? So now, every day when my son leaves for school, I ask him, what are you looking for today? And he says, the good, because what you look for, that's what you find. Thank you.